Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we'll look at combining the servo driver system from this video with the sensor hub system from this video into a single package. If you haven't seen the videos on the servo drivers and the sensor hub, then please go check those out now. I've put links to them in the description below. Quite a few people have asked whether it's possible to combine these two systems. I've done some research and the answer is yes, you can run sensors, servos and even other outputs from the same board using something called CMRI, which stands for the Computer Model Railroad Interface. The benefits of combining the two systems are that you only use one Arduino rather than two, you free up a USB connection, you only need one power supply, which obviously is more efficient and it saves you a bit of money. This video is the first in a series of three where we explore combining the packages and using CMRI. In part one, this video will combine the two systems together and will connect to JMRI using CMRI. In part two, we'll look at how to expand this system to include more output. So maybe we can attach it to a relay to run a lighting circuit or maybe a motor in an animation. In part three, we'll look at how you can link multiple sensor servo hubs together. So that rather than having one large central hub, you could have lots of smaller hubs strategically placed around your board, which is particularly useful if you've got a larger layout. Bit of a disclaimer here, the previous projects I showed you were coded by other people and have been downloaded and tested many times. What I'm about to share with you utilises some of that but is partly my own work. It hasn't been tested by lots of people and I'm not a professional coder. I'm sharing it because I think you might find it useful but do please take it easy on me if you spot any mistakes and do let me know in the comments below. I'll say it again, if you haven't watched the videos on the sensors and the servos, then please go do that now. A lot of the stuff we learn in those videos, you're gonna need for this one, and I'm not gonna cover it again. And there's no avoiding it, we will need to look at some Arduino code. So don't be put off if you're not computer minded, I'll talk you through it and hopefully you'll see it's not that bad. If you've already built the servo hub and the sensor driver and you're thinking, well, that was a waste of time. Well, it's not because it basically means you've already got everything you need to do this project. Also, if you have built them separately and you're happy with how everything's working, then there's no need to combine them. Maybe just watch the video and see whether this is something that might be of interest. A few people have asked whether it's possible to combine the DCC++ base station with the sensor hub or the servo driver, and I'm afraid I don't know and I'm not going to try. I don't think it's right to be messing around with the DCC++ base station because that controls your trains and you really need it to run as efficiently as possible. Putting a load of new code in there is only going to slow things down, so if I were you, I'd keep the DCC++ system separate. Alright, that's enough talking, let's get started. You'll need all the stuff from the Sensor Hub video, which includes the Arduino Mega, the sensor shield for the Mega, a 5 volt power supply and an infrared sensor to test the system with. Then from the servo driver video, you'll need a PCA9685 servo driver board and a servo to test the system with. Then you're going to need some female to female jumper wires to connect the pins on the PCA9685 to the pins on the sensor shield. You'll need to have the Arduino IDE software installed and have downloaded all the extra libraries that were installed in step 6 of the server driver video. Go do that now if you haven't because we won't go through it again in this video and your sketch won't work without them. Finally you'll need to have installed JMRI. Okay, our first step is to assemble all the components. We've got the Arduino Mega here at the bottom with the sensor shield pushed on top. Plugged into pin number three, we've got an infrared sensor and you can see that reacts over here. Uh, why are we using pin three? Well, that's because we're not allowed to use pin zero, one and two because they're reserved for something else in this project and we'll come on to that later. And then we've got the PCA9685 board over here with a servo plugged into position zero. Both the PCA9685 and the sensor shield are sharing a five volt power supply, which is over there. And then the bit that's slightly different from what you would have seen before is how the PCA9685 is connected to the sensor shield. And that's because we're using the same pins that we did in the servo driver video on the servo driver board we're using the SDA the SCL and the ground and 5 volts but they are plugged into some of the pins on the sensor shield so let's take a look at the connections you need to make so we're going to connect the PCA9685 to some pins on the sensor shield so the first thing you need to do is find sets of pins 20 and 21 and they should be next to the labels SDA and SCL and each set of pins if you remember will have a signal pin a ground pin and a 5 volt pin and we're going to use these 
to connect to the PCA9685. So we'll start by connecting the ground pin on the PCA9685 to either of the ground pins on sets of pins 20 or 21. So I'm going to use the ground pin on set of pins 21. Next, we're going to connect the SCL pin on the PCA9685 to the signal pin on set of pins 21. Then the SDA pin on the PCA9685 to the signal pin on set of pins 20. And it's important you get these ones the right way around. But you'll see set of pins 20 is under the SDA label and set of pins 21 is under the SCL label. And then you can connect the VCC on the PCA9685 to either of the 5 volt pins on set of pins 20 or 21. And I'm going to use the 5 volt pin on set of pins 21. So that's everything connected up. Let's take a look at the sketch we're going to upload to test that everything works. So the sketch is available to download from my GitHub repository and I've put a link in the description. It's called CMRI Turnouts and Sensors. Let's quickly run through it. All the text in grey is comments and I've put that in to help explain what each part of the code is doing. And you'll see as we go through, if you got rid of most of the comments, there isn't actually that much code in here. At the top, we're including the four libraries that we need to use and these are the same ones we installed in step six of the servo driver video. We're going to be setting the Arduino up as if it was a piece of CMRI hardware. CMRI stands for Computer Model Railroad Interface, and this is actually pretty old technology. A guy called Bruce Chubb first introduced this system back in 1985, and it stood the test of time because it's very reliable, and if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Bruce has a website over at jlcenterprises.net. There's plenty more information on CMRI over there, and you can even buy ready-made modules and books on the subject. There are different types of CMRI hardware and we're setting our Arduino up to be a type called a SUSIC, which can handle up to 2048 inputs or outputs. Each piece of CMRI hardware has a node address and in this section here we're setting that address as one. It's important that we know this for later when we're setting up the connection in JMRI. The next bit should be familiar and this is where we set the number of servos we're using and I've only got one in this example. Here we set up the address of the PCA9685 servo driver board. We've only got the one board here, so no need to specify the address and it'll default to 0x40. This line sets the pins used for communication. Then here we set up our CMRI connection. So we're taking the node address that we defined above. 64 is the number of inputs and 32 is the number of outputs. Although as I said above, we could in theory set this up with a total of 2048 inputs and outputs. This should be familiar from the servo video and is setting up a table to hold the open and close status and positions of the servos. So that's everything we need to find, so let's move on to the setup section. We're setting pins 3 to 19 and 22 to 69 as input pins. We have to leave connections 20 and 21 alone because they're used for the servo driver communication. Now we start the serial connection and we've got a board rate of 19,200 and it's important to note this because we'll need to know it when we set up the connection in JMRI. Here we initialize the PCA9685 servo driver. This next section again should look familiar because we're defining the open close positions of the servos and you'll determine these using the calibration process we've seen in the other video. Now we enter the main processing loop. So first we're working through the servos, getting the open close positions from JMRI and then setting the position of the servo. This sketch is only for a single PCA9685 board and doesn't include any slow motion for the turnout or fade if you had an LED connected. Then in the next bit, we read the data from the sensors. We've got a line here to read the sensor on pin three, which you'll see will flow through to address 1001 in JMRI. To make the sketch run as fast as possible, I've only included the lines I need to. So for example, if I connected a sensor to pin five, then I'd uncomment this line. And I've just added reminders to not use pin 0, 1, 2, 13, 20, and 21. Okay, so now's the time to connect your Mega to the computer, hit upload and get that sketch onto the board. Now let's move on to looking at JMRI. The setup in JMRI is similar to how we set up the servo driver. First we'll go to edit, preferences, connections and if we don't already have a connection to CMRI then we'll need to add one. We'll use a serial connection and my board is on COM3. Click additional settings and make sure the board rate is the same as the rate used in the sketch, which was 19,200. Now hit configure nodes, click on add node, 
change the node address to be the same as the node address in the sketch, which was 1. In the node type drop down list, change it from SMINI, which allows 24 inputs and 48 outputs, to USIC underscore SUSIC. Change the card size to 32 bit. We're going to change card 1 to an input card, which will hold our first 32 sensors. And then we're going to change card 2 also to an input card, which will hold the second 32 sensors. And that gives us our 64 sensors in total. Then we're going to change card 2 to an output card, and that gives us 32 outputs for the servos. Although we've only got 16 connections on the board, so we're only going to utilise half of that card. We can give it a description, so we'll call this our sensor servo hub. Make sure enable polling at start is selected and hit add node. Check that the summary says you've got your 64 inputs and your 32 outputs. Hit save and JMRI will need to restart. And that's all we need to do. Previously with the sensor hub, you'd need to run that script every time, but this way we've removed the need for that. Okay, let's move on to setting up our servo and our sensor in JMRI and make sure everything works. Let's set up the servo for the turnout first. So we'll go to tools, tables, turnouts, and go to the CMRI tab, hit add, the hardware address is 1001, and that's because we're using node 1, which is the first number, and then the three digits afterwards are the position of the servo, so our servo is the first position on the board. And we'll give this username CTO1. And we can try that out. So that's all working. Let's move over onto the sensors and go to the CMRI tab. Again, click add. And in the sketch, we've mapped the sensor on pin three to bit one. So the hardware address is 1001. And if you're thinking, hang on, we've just used this address for the servo. Well, that was an output and this is an input. So we can have the same address. And we'll give this a username CSO1. So let's try that out by activating the sensor and see whether this updates. So that looks like it's working, and if you're happy with everything, now's a good time to save your configuration and panels. So there we go, an example of how sensors and servos can be run off the same Arduino, controlled by JMRI using CMRI. As I said, I'm not a programmer or a computer scientist, so there are probably ways that code could be more efficient. Please share your thoughts in the comments below, but hopefully it's given you a base you can work off of and you can develop it to suit your needs. Another good thing about this setup is you can easily change some of the pins on the sensor shield from being inputs to outputs. And that's what we're going to look at in the next video. We'll use those to control lighting circuits that operate on a different voltage or maybe a motor in an animation. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification button so YouTube will let you know when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.